Playing fans, Roman Dacel here, back with Thieves of Tharbad. It's 80-50 of the series. This book was written in 1985 and is a first edition as far as I know. And it talks about the city of Tharbad, which is in Cardolan. And this is an Agnes McBride cover art of some thieves at the docks. On the inside cover, you have a map of central Minhiriath, or Tharbad and, and the environs to its north, all the way up to the angle of Fenestrunen and the ruined city of Androth and the start of the Barrow Downs in Tyrion Gorthad. If you go to the back, it just gives a, pre a listing of what you can get. So I already have all these books, and I have all the, already did those books, and we got the map. This book's in pretty good shape. I did use it a few times. I bought this from Fandom 2 in Ottawa. Long, long ago. And then it's also part of the the uh, second edition Arnor book. A lot of this can be found in there. Opening up, it goes through the guidelines as always. The, the key of the uh, basic map is good. The introduction starts with a story. And this is after 1409. So it describes the disaster of the Battle of Tyrion Gorthad when the last king of Cardolan was killed by forces from Angmar and what happens afterwards. And it talks about the, the legate, Saramar of Gondor, when he hears the news that the last king of Cardolan and his sons are killed and he leaves a daughter behind. Then we go into a brief history of Cardolan. Right up until, it's really brief, until 1351 when King Menalcar of Cardolan died and was succeeded by Auster. Unlike many predecessors, and Auster is supposed to be like a, not of the true line of the Sildur, not through the male, more like a bastard, but still of the line of a Sildur. Osterher, the last king of Cardolan, allies with Arvileg, the king of Arthanane, against Agmar and Rudar. So it talks about the final confrontation between the two and how Cardolan was supposed to be provide the, the anvil to the Arthanane hammer, but the witch king marched his forces early before they were ready and smashed them at Amon Sul. The army of Cardolan retreats to the Barrow Downs and gets overwhelmed at the Barrow Downs in the Old Forest. Only a fraction escape. So then it goes into a history of uh, Tharbad, really brief. It talks about the North River, which is, began over 600 years ago. The south of the river, west of the road, east of the road. So the oldest part of the Tharbad is the island itself in the middle. And then we got the land around Tharbad, the geography. So it talks about the northern uplands. The Grithlin Highlands, the Guathold Basin, the South Coastal Lowlands. So it really talks about all of Cardolan. Because the Grithlin Highlands are way out, way far away. Uh, we got flora and fauna. No big deal there. Unless you're going swimming, then you might want to watch out for crocodiles and snakes. The inhabitants, the Dunedain, the Dunlennings, the Northmen, and the Bofran. Again, very brief explanations. Politics and power. This is really cool. This is a different, unique. It goes into 1409 to 1412. So right after the disaster of Amon Sul and the Battle of the Baradons. And it talks about the Hurry, which are the seven major lords of Cardolan. So there's Grithlin, Calantar, Tenar, Fiotar, Titan, Gorthat, Eridorith, and Ether Guathlo. And it talks about the, the Chancellor, Nimr, who's been a member since 1403. And he was appointed by the king. So the death of his sons, the king and his sons in the Barodons created a vacuum in the official line of succession. And the chancellor create, proclaims himself regent. And the sole remaining heir of the Cardolan royal house is the princess Nurnadel. Nurnadel. There's only three surviving her, or lords, of Tenar and Calantar, as well as Grithlin. So there's nearly, the other four are, have been killed, and there's a succession crisis in for the 
four of the seven lordships, major lords. Half the summer harvest was destroyed, rendered inaccessible, and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of problems. So how would you handle it? And that's what this book goes into. So you got prominent persons, Tardigal, the army captain, who commands 300 royal troops that were left stationed in uh, Andreth, and he is a royalist. Princess Nerndale, who's young, of 16 years old. So she's really young for a Dunedine. Mablin, Grithlin, the Her or Lord of Grithlin. Tanari, Kalantar, Nimher. So it go, goes into the descriptions of all the people. Saramar, Ministan, the mayor of Tharbad. Lamrel, who leads the people who have fled to Tharbad and are in the shanty town. And it mentions other important folk. Now, what I like was the military forces. So prior to 1409, there was roughly 400 mounted Requian or knights, 2,500 regular infantry and mercenaries, and some 15 to 16,000 minimally trained spear levies. Also, each her or lord possessed a mounted retinue and bodyguard, as follows. Turning Gorth at 100, Eridorth at 160, Feotar 140, Calantar 150, Grithlin 140, Tenar 110, and the Ether Guatho 80. Fully 80% of Colonel's army perished in the fighting around Weathertop and in defense of the Baronauts. So that's a major thing. So it gives you the, the numbers at the time of the 1409 war and how, how many fell and how badly that affected Cardolan. It also mentions a small navy consisting of six light galluses providing coastal defense and river patrols. Four of them are berthed at Talser and the remaining are Two at Tharbad. All six survived the war intact. So there is a small navy. Arnor's biggest problem was it really didn't have a large coastline. It wasn't connected to the sea. Only at Tharbad and the Ether Guathlo. So it was not a maritime nation. And it's got Cardolan and Tharbad at other times. So it talks about peasant revolts, the Great Plague, and the diminishing role of Tharbad after the fall of Ar Arthedain. The fall of Moria just completely collapsed the economy of Tharbad. So Tharbad eventually became nothing more than a ghost, a ghost town. Boromir, on his way in from Gondor to Rivendell, lost his horse at the fords of Tharbad after the Great Bridge had collapsed during flooding. So Tharbad itself is a man-made work, first erected by the Numenorians as they built the bridges. So these bridges have stayed forever. And it talks about the City Watch, which in 1409 has 225 footmen who patrol the, the city, concentrating on the bridge and the dikes facing west. They're not much of a police force. Then it goes into places of interest. So it gives you all these different things on the map. And when you get to the center map, you'll, you'll see all the uh, symbols. So the North Bank, South Bank, Dockyards, Thieves' Quarter, King's Row, the Commoner's Quarter, the Merchant's Quarter, and then it goes into more description of what, what you can find. The South Bank, so it gives the Houses of Healing a description of the floor plans. Go to the docks, so the Gondorian em Embassy in the House of Saramar is mentioned. And it's really good reading, it's cool reading all this stuff. The map of the city itself. This map was really well done by ICE. I love this map. It gives a population of around 21,000 people, which is plausible. It was the biggest city in the North Kingdom. <laughs> kind of wonder why it didn't become the capital of Cardolan in its day. And you can see the, the dikes and the castles and the walls. You have the shanty town to the north. All the gates are named. The island, the thieves' quarter, the commons. The King's Quarter is in the, the very far, right there along the main road. And it gives you a legend of what's what. So it was really interesting. You can take this, photocopy it, or and uh, have some forces besiege, try and besiege the city. Or you use counters to do the same thing. Interesting stuff. You have the Guild Hall's uh, translation key. So it's really good. 
So now I'm going back, it goes to the thieves' quarter, tells you who's who there. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details of this. There is a fortress ruin since the Norian times. And it's fallen and this structure is now the this structure here is is a ruined fortress from the Norian times. It's now the home of of a bunch of thieves. So that's kinda cool. You got the King's Row, the King's House, the townhouses of all the major lords, because they'd all have their own houses in the city. The mayor's office, jewelers, the common quarter. It gives you the typical merchant's home and shop, typical row house. And you can go on and on about going in things, certain things to see what's what. Guidelines for adventures. You got to select an adventure, choosing a time period, and some suggestions. Encounters. Using traps, weapons, and spells. So the adventures are on Hank Cuddle and they give you the extortion ring. I never played that one. It's not really my thing, an extortion ring. They got an abandoned warehouse. So nothing wasn't wasn't something I played. The theft of the tiara. Again, the tiara of Cardolan for Princess and Nerthandel. And oh, sorry, the princess. Again, not something we played. But we did go after the uh, the thieves that were in the old castle using the sewers. So you have the sewer system, you use it to try and get the thieves. So that that's kind of cool. So it has layouts for the for the castle. That was kind of cool. Characters, the East Tower, prominent people, and then catching the thieves. The other adventure was smugglers on the Guathlo, so you go after smugglers. Again, not something we did. Tharbat was just mainly a place to chill, buy some stuff, get into a bar fight. Ambush north of the town, so this is bandits on the north. Well, we did this, clear out bandits from Tharbad. Make the environs around the north safer. So you get your master encounter table, and your master NPC table. So all the various people that are mentioned in the book, as well as the extort. Then you have the adventures, the extortioning, the bandits, and the highway robbers. Use this for any time period. So they give two time periods. They give 1640 and 1410. And finally, the master military table. So in 1410, there's a small Gondorian garrison. There's a Cardellani garrison. A town watch, the Hur's bodyguard, and... Nunadel's bodyguard. You get street urchins, shantytown mob, and thief bands. So it does give him useful military table. Overall, I thought it was a very informative book. I like how they did a different time period than normal, other than the 1640. And the 1409 book gives you an idea of Cardinal's military at that time, and you can use it as a basis. You could recreate the Battle of Amansul. With what you know from Thieves of Tharbad, the Lost Realm of Carolan, the Arthedain book, and the Angmarin book. As well as the Hillman of the Trollshaws. You could recreate that Battle of Amansul. Or, and the Retreat to the Barrow Downs, if it came to that. Turn the Tides of History. Or by rebuilding Carolan to what it used to be. So there are some interesting scenarios there. So it was a great book. One of the better ones they made for this. Much better than Pass of the Dead or the Dead Marshes book. Not as good as Shelob's Lair or the Hillman of the Trollshaws, which I thought were two excellent books. So I'm part with the Bree book, and I'm glad they reintroduced this in the Arnor book. They also do another scenario with the uh, in the second edition with the Palantiri Quest, where they go to Tharbad as Aragorn's rebuilding it. So you see what, what it's like in the fourth age and what they've done to rebuild it. So that's pretty cool there. So anyway, any, any Miller fans, let me know if you guys had this book. What'd you like? What'd you dislike? Leave comments in the comment section. Hit that like button. Subscribe. The bell, the bell symbol because I'll be keep putting these things out. 
going to Ottawa this weekend, even though I have a cold. I want to see a hockey game. So, until next time, this has been Roman Daisel. So, until next time, this is Roman Daisel. I'm out of here.